Well, welcome. My name is Nicole Miller. I am with the WaterWise program at the University of Arizona's Cooperative Extension in Cochise County. I am the youth program coordinator. I work alongside Mary Ann and help a little bit with the community side. Um, today, we are going to be discussing gray water and just a couple little housekeeping items. If you have questions along the way today, there is a box at the bottom where you can chat and you can type those um, questions in the chat and I will kind of monitor those and interject and ask those either in the presentation or toward the end of the presentation. And then um, also while you're going through, while you're listening today and watching, please keep in mind that we do have a post survey that we do at the end. I will email that out after we are done today. And it asks you things like, um, what did you learn? What are some ways you might apply this? Just kind of have those in the back of your uh, mind today while you are watching our presentation. Um, so without further ado, I want to introduce Ms. Marianne Capehart. She is the coordinator of our WaterWise program here at the University of Arizona's Cooperative Extension. Uh, she helps the uh, community embrace uh, WaterWise practices like conserving water indoors, collecting rainwater, um, using gray water, xeriscaping, and understanding the state of our watershed in general. Uh, side note on that one, we do have a watershed brown bag in December that I will be posting soon. Um, she believes that most people want to keep their water supply plentiful and clean and enjoys encouraging and helping them do that. Uh, she is also an advocate for leaving enough water in our waterways and aquifers for the environment to flourish. Uh, she has a master's of environmental education from the University of Arizona in Tucson, and she currently resides here in Bisbee as I do. Marianne, I will let you take it away. Thank you so much, Nicole. It's great to everybody, have everybody here. Nice to see some familiar uh, muted faces um, and names. Uh, thanks everybody for coming. Um, yeah, I uh, just wanna mention briefly that we will be recording this. And so that rec recording will be available on YouTube and our um, WaterWise website under events, you scroll down. And I'm also going to save this PDF to put on um, our website as well. And that way, um, if it, you know, there's some details you missed, you can um, be very welcome to go and check that PDF out later or tell friends about it that didn't get to come. All right. So without any other further ado, I'm going to share my screen. Can you see that, Nicole? Yes, ma'am. All right. Okay, so everybody can see that first screen. Um, we're talking about gray water today at home. There's also uh, commercial industrial applications, but focusing on the home today. And uh, I, I really like gray water. I like the idea of using uh, lightly used water twice. Um, you know, we have a finite amount of water on this planet. So all water is being reused again and again. So um, I, I had a niece who was doing um, a Peace Corps stint in Africa and she said they, in Benin, and she said they used it four times. I found that very interesting. I know part of that was bathing and then using it on the garden. So it's kind of what we're talking about today in addition to laundry. Um, so uh, yeah, I'm gonna just emphasize a few things right from the get-go, which is that, um, you know, kind of to demystify gray water for some people, it is plumbing. So it's just getting that water, uh, what would be drained to the sewer or septic out to the landscape. So it's basically plumbing. Um, which requires a plumber or someone who's very handy in that way and has all the prerequisite knowledge uh, to do gray to, gray, to do plumbing, uh, except for the laundry, which is actually quite easy to do on uh, oneself if the um, laundry is conveniently located at the outside of the building. Um, never store gray water. You'll see a lot of fancy gizmos for storing and filtering gray water. I really don't recommend it. Um, it goes bad after 24 hours. 
Uh, that's why people have a kind of bad reputation. Gray water has kind of a bad reputation for people because um, it's been left and stinks and it's really gets very um, putrid. So uh, some people have surge tanks. That's okay if they're empty within 24 hours, but if you forget, then there you go with some stinky putrid water. So I recommend never storing gray water. Um, we also have to be uh, participate in the sense of, of using right products. Um, not everybody does. I know people who fed fruit trees with Tide, you know, uh, uh, laundry water that was, uh, she used her Tide uh, and other detergents um, like that, but it's recommended to use more uh, environmental friendly products, which Nicole will get into later. Um, and, you know, just to remind everybody that gray water is not potable. It's not drinkable or for animals to drink. Okay. So um, yeah, I don't know if people are aware that there is um, some regulations on gray water, new residential construction within the city of Bisbee um, and also in the Sierra Vista subwatershed. I, I, I talked to the county recently about that. Um, so it has, it's, it's good news. Um, the stub out should be really obvious if, you're, if your house was built after this, which I believe was 2006, but don't quote me on that. Um, if you want, really wanna know the deadline, I can please email me. So um, yeah, that's one of the requirements is that if there's a backup, it needs to go to the sewer. And we'll talk about how that happens. Um, needless to say, if your water is going straight out to the landscape uh, with gravity, there isn't a large chance of backup. There can be more so when you're storing. So obviously you wouldn't want gray water to back up into your fixtures. Um, so there's ways to get around that. Um, yeah, there's some really good reasons for using gray water. It cuts down on the use of our, uh, our groundwater and, um, you know, why, why use brand new clean water on landscapes that have, uh, healthy soils that can absorb any leftover hair, grease, soap products and so forth before the plant, um, is using it. So, uh, maybe I need to frame this briefly that we are talking about, uh, gray water used in the landscapes. Primarily people who don't have landscapes can use gray water to flush toilets, but it would require filtration. So we're not really gonna go there today. Um, we're really talking about using gray water in the landscape, taking it out of the house um, and using it in the landscape. Um, yes, yeah, so it is filtered in, in a good healthy soil um, one of the reasons to use nice products because you don't want to kill the biome in that soil, the natural existing microbes and so forth, but um, soil is a great purification method. Um, civic benefits of gray water, saving, saving energy, saving chemicals that are used to reclean water that sends down the, that comes through the sewer to the treatment plant. Um, Electricity is saved by, you know, we have uh, UV units at the Bisbee um, treatment plant and those take a lot of energy, although there is solar. Um, and, you know, any kind of products have to be replaced and bulbs have to be replaced and so forth. So it saves a lot of resources to use what water uh, you're using in the landscape from your house using gray water. Um, it also can, it can eliminate strain on a septic system. You know, the more water you send to a septic system, the harder it has to work, uh, the, the more um, it can fill to capacity or um, and overflow. And sometimes that can cause um, non-point source pollution. So it's good to, to reduce that strain on your septic. Um, there's also situations where it's impossible to have a septic that's not, um, crazy hard to install. So it can eliminate the need for a larger septic. Um, I'll put a caveat around that in a few minutes. Um, so, um, and, you know, less chemicals. I, you know, I think it's partly, you know, there's a benefit to gray watering, like a lot of conservation that they actually discovered that there's a benefit in actually learning um, and involving oneself in an activity that you feel is beneficial. So um, oh no, there's the cat. Um, so it does sensitize you to what you're putting in the drain that would otherwise go to the um, wastewater treatment plant or the sewer. 
And some of that stuff is not gonna get cleaned out of the wastewater treatment plant. We, uh, I recently heard some uh, talk about nanoparticles and those are not yet able to be cleaned out of um, water at a treatment plant, they're too small. Okay, um, so yeah, about half the water that we use inside can be used outside. Um, so that helps uh, guard against lack of rain. Um, and if your water use is restricted, but we don't, we don't have that in Arizona, um, but that could happen um, where you were only allowed to use a certain amount of water and you didn't have enough for your plants, you could reuse your great water. Um, this is about approximately where we use our water. So about 60% of it is um, available to be used again. What is gray water? It's gently used water from showers, tubs, bathroom sinks, and washing machines. And it has some, some things in it, although they're very diluted. Um, dirt, food, grease, hair, and so forth. Cleansing products, shampoos, soaps. We'll get into that later. Uh, it's not dishwasher. That's got too much organic matter in it and um, not uh, from the sink. Uh, this is black water. So toilets and uh, laundry water that's used to um, wash diapers or, or linens and so forth and clothing from people with infectious diseases um, is, is hazardous. So that's, that's called black water. Um, so, uh, yeah, as I mentioned earlier, the, the easiest way to, to do some gray water is to do the laundry. Now it needs to be near an exterior wall. So I'm hoping if you don't have gray water and you want to have it, you're thinking, ah, yay, laundry. Uh, I hope it's close to an exterior wall so you wouldn't be doing extensive plumbing. Um, and it's quite easy to just get that water through the wall outside and to a plant or tree. Um, and the wash machine pressurizes that water. So if it's the piping is sloped, it gets to where you want it to go. Now I'm gonna just have you take a quick look at this slide. This is um, probably somebody in California where they have to um, take the gray water into um, a basin below ground. We don't have that in California. I mean, sorry, we don't have that in Arizona. Uh, we can actually daylight our gray water. Here's some quick do's. Um, these are just sort of motivational. Um, I'm gonna just kind of go by that and um, go to the don'ts. Um, a vacuum break helps the water not flow back into the fixture. Uh, detergents, you do need to pay some attention so you're not giving your plants a lot of salt or boron. They don't like that. Um, the slope of your piping matters and um, don't use it to drip irrigation unless it's filtered. And overflow is always important in any water system. Um, yeah, so don't want it pooling in the landscape of more than 24 hours as well or um, diverting to any place with aquatic life. Uh, okay. Let's just look at this real quick. I do, we do have a workshop on the website that um, helps you plan gray water. Uh, this person is washing a lot of clothes, probably a family of, of four or five. Um, and the washer is not, is not one of these high efficiency new washers with 10 gallons of water or so forth a wash, but kind of did, did some math here. Um, so they, they did a load five times a week and they got this much water times the year, and that's the 9,000 gallons. So again, this is kind of a, a larger family. You could cut that in half if you're a two-person family or in fifths if you're a one-person family. Um, and then uh, I did a little plant demand here. These plant demands are based a lot on um, kind of normal evapotranspiration and so forth. Um, so they're standardized, it's not, it's not true for everybody. Um, but it gives you a ballpark. And so um, this is three peach trees uh, that need 82 gallons for watering. And so there you go. Uh, you have it with that family. If you had less people in the home, you could do one peach tree. So 
that's that's kind of cool to have an idea of how much you'll be getting for it and how much uh, it could feed. Here are some obstacles. Um, it doesn't work with water softening unless it's potassium. Uh, your soil has to have decent drainage and percolation. If you have a very heavy clay soil, it, it won't work very well. Um, you may have to add a significant amount of mulch to a basin. Um, again, I've mentioned infectious diseases and, and diapers and um, you need to send it away from the home. And let me know if I'm going too fast. I, I, as I said, some of this detail you'll see if you download the PDF later, but um, wanted to try to cover the basics uh, and get to some pictures. Um, yes, is your washing machine close to an exterior wall? Kind of important for the laundry gray water. Um, your slope, so you, you have some pressure coming from the, the wash machine itself, but not a great deal. So you want to make sure that there was enough slope. Oh my God, I think I'm gonna have to get this back. Hang on. Thank you guys for your patience. As always, uh, we are working from home and home life gets in the way sometimes. I knew, so. I knew the cat was gonna be right where he wasn't supposed to be. <laughs> oh, crying. Okay. And uh, one of the kind of critical things is your plumbing in a slab. So if you're building, um, you're, you're, you can plan ahead. I'm hoping that, um, this will help you think about that as a, as a great option if you're planning a structure to install the gray water from the get-go. If your plumbing is in a slab, it could be very difficult. I'm not gonna get too deep into the plants that like gray water. Um, I'm just gonna talk briefly about uh, a simple version, which is just to water a tree. And so, um, that's, that's kind of an easy way to think about it as we saw with those peach trees um, in Hereford. And um, this is just a simple version of watering a tree, um, getting the water out to a very nice mulch filled basin. So that kind of filters the water and helps it absorb and helps it not evaporate and supplying water to that tree. Now, some people have the gray water go to a hose and they move that hose around the yard just to feed different plants at different times. Um, here is a list of the plants. Um, I'm going to go past this, but know that it will be available to you. Um, and we need to talk about food plants. So you don't want to put gray water on top of anything that you're going to eat raw. Um, you don't want to feed gray water to root vegetables. Um, you can feed it to plants that um, will not touch the gray water if they're you know, off the ground and definitely things like nut trees and, and fruit trees are excellent. Um, so that's a recommendation for that to not be consuming something that has been touched by gray water if it has not gone through soil and the root system and not root vegetables. Okay, so here's here's one of the things we, um, we recommend for um, laundry to landscape. Uh, as I said, the county does not wants you to have a provision for if the water backs up, then you need to be able to send it to the sewer. Um, this is how one does it for the laundry. You do a, a three-way valve and you can all switch it as you need it. And that way, if you do have a really dirty load, a lot of, um, you know, dirty rags or something, you can uh, switch that easily to go to the sewer. Um, and let's look at those fixtures. Here is um, one of these installations. So you see the um, laundry water's coming up through the laundry hose in the middle. And to the left, it's going to the sewer through a standpipe. And to the right, it's going um, out the wall to the landscape. Here is one with a um, breaker, which I highly recommend it. You can use an air gap or you can use this, this um, air brake. And that's actually kind of guarantees that you won't have any um, problems with the water flowing the wrong direction. 
So this is a nice installation. The laundry water is coming up the middle and it's going to what would have been this, the outlet to the sewer. And then to the right, it's going down this, this, in this picture to uh, go out the wall near the floor. So here are some different versions of the three-way valves. And um, these are also used for laund uh, not laundry gray water, but other kinds of gray water as well. We'll talk about that in a second. And here's some piping. Um, this is one inch tubing going to the landscape. And um, for showers, baths and sinks, you can use a um, normal drain um, sewer pipe, drain pipe. Here's the vacuum breaker, um, which keeps the water flowing in the right direction. This is Brad Lancaster, he's a pretty famous dude for um, starting huge interest in rainwater harvesting in Tucson and also an advocate of gray watering and curb cuts and all sorts. I'm sure you're all aware of him or if you're not, check him out, Brad Lancaster. So he has it where he just has that laundry hose going into three different stand pipes, it's so fun. Uh, it's, more it's more piping obviously, um, but um, when he thinks one, one tree needs watering, he just switches that hose into a different stand pipe. So this is a picture of his fig tree in one of his nice mulched basins, um, keeping that groundwater from running uh, around uh, on a flat surface and infiltrating it through the nice mulch. And um, you can see the three sets of pipes going out to three different basins in the picture on the bottom. Here's another photo of his um, setup. This is the laundries in purple. Um, he has some other gray water in purple coming from his sink. And then there's a little picture, a uh, little arrow with, in blue of his rainwater coming down to a basin as well. So yeah, he's had, he's had, he's had to do some trenching and dig some, some trenches and put some pipes in, but it's, um, it's all there now. And um, he actually asked me to come over and do laundry once because we're I met him a couple of times because sometimes um, if you're not home and not doing laundry, there's no gray water. So that is another, another important consideration. Um, this is a fancy one. It, you can see the, the breaker above the pipe going out um, on the inside of the building. And then they dug around and send the water to different areas. Um, it will, not likely end up at the bottom of this pipe unless there are uh, shutoff valves so you can direct the water past certain plantings to get to the end of, the, of that piping system of those two trees. Uh, just another um, view of laundry to landscape. Um, you have the three-way diverter valve so it can either go to the sewer or the landscape, anti-siphon. Um, this is, uh, again, California. They have to put it into um, a receptacle before it goes into the basin. We can just send that pipe right out to the basin and, and just have it, have it go out. Okay, and this is nice. They, also, it looks like there's a place to take that water through a spigot. It's not perfectly clear, um, but that's the other option is to um, send it to a hose. Another view, this is actually my gray water. This is my laundry. I don't know if there's a three-way valve. I also have shower gray water. I don't think there's a three-way valve. Uh, I think that first people just sent it to the landscape. I could be wrong. I have not crawled into that crawl space. It's very tight. Um, however, it's nice big piping and it's sloped. And so it's just going out to um, some trees that are beyond this pipe on the right. Uh, this one goes into a surge tank, which is another possibility that people do sometimes. Um, and then it goes out a hose and that hose is moved around the landscape. Again, if, if you're not using that water right away, it will be very, very noxious. 
uh, the very simple version. So you have a three-way valve, um, but it just goes into a bucket. Uh, Got to remember to um, empty the bucket. I had some kids I lived with when I was in graduate school who um, took off the bottom of, of the right of the trap for the kitchen sink <laughs> and collected gray water and then would haul it out to the landscape. And, you know, one day, well, maybe actually a couple of times, um, forgot about that water. And it just like, there was the gray water all over the kitchen floor. So you do want to remember that. And also it's not legal in Arizona to use um, sink, kitchen sink, gray water, too much organic matter. Quick question on that, um, Marianne. Uh, sorry to bother you. A uh, question mm -hmm. to come in and this is kind of relevant. It says, uh, can the sink, sink or dishwasher water be used to um, moisten a compost pile? Um, because we're not meant to use gray water from the sink, I have to say no, officially. Um, in terms of the biology of it, I don't see a problem with that, uh, using that water in your composting. Um, so that I give me, I'm giving you two answers because it's, it's not considered gray water, water from the kitchen sink and the dishwasher, no. The dishwasher is not is not suitable. The usually the products that are used are not suitable for gray water. So I hope that answers that question. Thanks. Sure. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm putting in a little plug in here for simplicity. Um, one of the main reasons for simplicity outside of saving resources and energy is just that people get real excited and put something in a great system, but they don't think enough about the maintenance and the ongoing maintenance. And so that system um, malfunctions at some point. So I, I'm really putting a plug in here for simplicity. And uh, also in simplicity, how you're using the gray water, it's not something you would want to get too complicated sending it all around because um, it's, it can clog. It's not, you know, it, has, it does have some things in it. And so you want it to be as simple as possible. There are what they call branched drains um, that take gray water to different areas off of a one inch to half inch piping. Uh, they use that in Tucson quite a bit at the watershed management group and there's different valves to uh, turn off and on different areas of watering. But um, I think in general, you, you wanna um, keep it as simple as possible. And uh, yes, I do need to mention again that if you're out of town a lot, I don't actually don't know if I've said this that clearly, if you're out of town a lot um, or not home very much, um, gray water might not be the right thing for you. Unless you're having someone come over, like Brad said, to do some laundry at your house so you can get that gray water out to those plants that are depending on it or, or, or take a shower. Um, Here's a pipe of a friend of mine just going out to a um, basin. You can see there's a little funk there. Um, at some point that would be best to um, put rainwater on there to kind of clean out some of that, a little bit of a debris from the washer. Um, here's a, getting a little more complex. So we have, this is a house without a slab. So it does have a crawl space. So that washer and sink in the bathroom are going to a three-way uh, underneath the floor of the house and then being sent out subterraneously to a bed. So we'll move into a little discussion of um, other kinds of gray water besides the laundry. And there's a bathtub um, and a sink. And again, I said, this is really, you know, the job for a plumber or one with plumbing skills, not all plumbers are that familiar or comfortable with gray water. I think if they understood it well, they would not have a problem with the mechanics of it and so forth, but they, they may need some education about what, what is, what's the job, how to do it. Uh, of course, every site is unique in the placement of the pipes and so forth and the placement of the sewer. So it takes um, some, some planning out of where you're going to put that valve and how it's going to go out to the landscape. 
and uh, this is some shots of um, of a three-way valve in a crawl space. And it actually, because it's so hard to get to that three-way valve, if you decide I'm going away and um, the person who's going to be staying in my house does not want to use the right detergent or um, I, I don't think we need the water in the landscape, um, you, you, you'd you have a hard time turning that valve. So what happens is that there's some um, electronics that can help you turn off and on that valve from a control switch in the bathroom. Uh, here's another uh, gray water system on the left. Um, well, this whole system is the same one. It does not have a three-way valve. Um, and so, but you can see it kind of um, going down and just got a nice big pipe and then it goes outside and then it actually gets um, notched down to hose, three quarter inch hose size and that hose gets moved around to different areas of the yard. Um, yes, it's good to use the sweeping um, elbows instead of corners to keep that flow moving. Um, mulch is very appropriate to kind of clean up some of that debris and the other good purposes of mulch to add some fertility to the soil and keep that moisture in the soil. I don't know about these corrugated um, pipes, but some people do use those. They're not as durable. And um, yes, if you're starting out with some gray water and you have a slab, you can consider um, the washer if it's near the extern external part of the building, external walls. Um, you can also lift a bathtub up and use um, box in some plumbing that way. Uh, you can also use a three-way under the sink and, and get it outside if it is near the outside of the building um, or the second floor. So here is an example of a sink installation with a three-way valve that will go out that wall to the outside. Here is the other side of my humble gray water system. Um, I, I have to just do a caveat. I didn't. I did not install this. It was here when I got when I moved in, and it's going to an IV plant, which is going nuts. So I uh, may replace that plant because it's not exactly native or local, but I'm telling you, it's loving that gray water and it's going crazy. So you can see it going under my uh, flooring. Pretty simple. Here's an example of where they made the three-way valve for a bathtub um, accessible. So, um, for some reason or other, uh, maybe someone has a lot of illness and they're taking a shower. You want to send that water to the sewer. You could switch that valve. Another example of a three-way valve in the floor, accessible. Um, okay, so that leads us to the products. And in that, I will hand that over to Nicole. Tell me when you want me to move forward with the slides, Nicole. All right, thanks. Uh, all right, I think we can hear everything. So, oh, there we are. So we're gonna talk a little bit about what products you can use and some that really you probably should not use in a gray water system, all right? So there are some verbiage, there's some verbiage out there that might be confusing. Eco-friendly um, isn't exactly gray water friendly. Eco-friendly may be that they're lower in phosphates, but there are certain things that may be in those products that would not be good for your plant. So there is a difference between eco-friendly and grape water friendly. That distinction is not always put on products either. It is, um, you're gonna have to go looking for the ingredients and we're gonna get to those if you wanna move forward. Um, some of those ingredients, um, so you might use a, a water bo uh, a, a booster or borax or boron, this is something you definitely do not want to have in your gray water. So if that's something you use in your washing machine, you're probably going to um, hurt your plants that you use on that. 
They're, they're not going to thrive. They're going to, it's not going to be good for them. Then there's also uh, lots of different types of sodium, not just sodium chloride, but anything that's a sulfate or a sul um, that has sodium as a, as a derivative of sodium and has a, a, the chemistry there is something you do not want to use on your planets. And then uh, bleach as well is another item that is not beneficial. Something you could use instead of that bleach, you could consider using either hydrogen peroxide or vinegar as substitutes to help boost the cleaning. Again, moderate quantities. You don't want to pour direct hydrogen peroxide or vinegar onto your plants, but once you've diluted it in the washing machine, it should be okay to um, use as gray water. Next slide. These are some of the additives that might be included. Again, like Marianne said, we're not going to, I'm not gonna read this entire slide to you. You can go back at some other point in time and look at this when we post it, but just know that boron, sodium and chlorine are items that you should not be um, adding to your water if you want to use it as gray water. All right. So there are, like I said, a whole array of products out there that may be eco-friendly but they may not be gray water friendly. These are just a couple that we have looked at that um, Oasis uh, detergents, they also have a cleaning and dishwasher solution. The Vasca is a, a, another laundry detergent. Um, Biopack, Ecos, even Trader Joe's has a um, product that is eco-friendly. Just make sure you're reading the labels, looking for the, the sodium and the boron um, in their list of ingredients. And if those are in there, then we would not be using them in our gray water. Then there's also some products, um, things that you may, may or may not see on the list. Um, just be sure that if you're using your gray water from your shower or your sink, that your soap shampoos are free of many of these toxic compounds, all right? It's not, one, it's not good for your plants, but also we wanna think about the soil health as well, those little microbes that grow in your soil. A lot of these things, can have an adverse effect on them and then your soil is not healthy and therefore your plants are not gonna be healthy either. So that list is fairly long, sodium, boron, those chlorine um, and bleaches, softeners, whiteners, um, antibacterial soaps and cleaners. If that's, I know that's a big thing right now with washing hands, um, those are not really uh, good for your plants either. Artificial colors, you wanna make sure they're free of fragrances. So not very, they're kind of uh, the free and clear kind of not having heavy smells or additives, artificial preservatives or paraffins in them. All right. And so again, this is just a very small, small um, example of some of those items that can be used in a gray water friendly uh, system. Again, not extensive, just make sure you're reading labels. I even, uh, my little story with this is the, the Dr. Brahms, I, I like to hike a lot. And so I use their stuff when I'm out on my hikes because it's, it's friendly to all the native plants that I am around when I'm out and about doing those things. All right, Miss Marianne, I think uh, I've done. Back to Thank you. you. Yeah, I use Dr. Bromer's. I, I also use Oasis. Actually, Oasis was designed by this guy in Santa Barbara named Art Ludwig, uh, who does Oasis design um, and um, it's actually good for plants. He designed it that way and it's expensive, but you, you can, it lasts a very long time. I don't know if anybody in the audience has been using that. Also Dr. Bromers, they do say to um, dilute it and you should dilute it. Um, and it, it's very effective diluted. So it's, it's pretty cost effective. Both of those products are, even though they're kind of expensive up front. Um, yeah, I just wanted to go a little bit over the history. Um, it's not that recently that we, we were not allowed to use gray water illegally, um, but people, some people were using it. That was part of the reason it got passed was like they're already using it. It's not very detrimental. And so um, it was passed and um, we can use it as long as um, you're following um, best practices. So, um, I have a, a list of these best practices. I don't think we probably have anyone using uh, more than 400 gallons a day. Uh, maybe, but I doubt it, unless you're using pool, maybe. I don't think so. So that, that, that is a requirement for residential gray water. Um, and I, I, I'm gonna leave these to you guys to look at later if, if, if you um, are concerned uh, with following those. Um, we've kind of covered most of them. 
Um, I think one of the things that people, as I said, I don't have in my house is the three-way valve, um, unless it's hiding in that crawl space. So um, that um, is not super clear in the county guidelines. Um, they don't want gray water to back up. If it does, it needs to have a way to go to the sewer. So in that sense, yes, um, you could use a three-way valve to solve that problem. Um, that is a little bit of a gray area, um, but I think it's a good idea, especially if the laundry you wanna do really dirty loads to be able to switch it to the sewer. Um, so this is, um, you don't want it running off the property um, and kind of here's some of the uses, um, the plants. So we talked a little bit about not having gray water touch anything edible that's eaten raw or root vegetables, um, fruit and nuts, yes. Um, you don't spray it. Uh, that could get um, on someone um, and that wouldn't be ideal. Um, this is one of those branch drain systems on the right. And don't want it to go into a wash where it could affect aquatic life. Um, it can't be close to a groundwater table. So if you have a very high groundwater level, you would not want to use it near that. And uh, ideally the pipes are um, purple, but um, we don't always get there, but that's ideal. You'll see those in larger installations where recycled water is being used in parks and so forth. Um, Again, I'm not recommending storing gray water, but if you have a surge tank or so forth, make sure it's sealed against mosquitoes. And these are some of the things you don't wanna have in your gray water. Um, antifreeze, mothball solvents. So things that you might be tempted to pour down the drain, although one should not um, put these things down the toilet. Um, you definitely don't wanna have it in your gray water. And uh, again, the infectious issues um, for safety's sake um, do not belong in gray water. And it needs to infiltrate into the soil within 24 hours. And ideally you wouldn't really have that situation because you, you'd be using a basin that has a little more heft to it with some mulch. Uh, you know, there are a ton of, of products out there for fancy gray water, and you may have reasons to want to engage in those. Um, but again, as I mentioned, most of these systems fail because people do not filter, uh, change filters or manage the system carefully enough. And uh, yes, legally, um, although you may be reducing the load on your septic, you you can't reduce the size of your septic if you're using gray water. It has to be um, designed for the use of the water, not taking into account the fact you're using all of it through the sewer, through the septic, excuse me. All right, so yeah, there's a few other little things you, um, you don't wanna use to, for seedlings. Um, yeah, it is, it is rather alkaline, so you wouldn't want to use it a lot on acid-loving plants. Um, and again, um, not on edible parts. And here I have put some um, resources. Uh, the Gray Water Action Group is awesome. Um, they have videos on how to do it, different installations, other considerations. So if you you want to go further into your study of gray water or your consideration of having your own gray water, um, that's a great resource. And uh, here's some other places as well. Um, so again, you could click on this if you download the PDF. And yeah, this is the Art Ludwig I mentioned, the guy who lives outside of uh, Santa Barbara, and he has a, a builder's guide. Um, again, it's, it's not as they say, rocket science, um, it, is, it is basically plumbing, but you know, there's a few considerations to think about that plumbers may not be that familiar with. Um, so there is um, that resource is a builder's guide, which is handy. Um, 
yeah. So that is pretty much it. Um, if anyone has some questions, I'd be happy to try to answer them. All right, if no one has any questions, Stephen, um, any comments? <laughs> I'm calling on people now. <laughs> Steve, do you have any comments? I know that you recently constructed a building that's very green and environmentally friendly. <laughs> All right, well, he has no comment. We'll let him off easy. Oh, here we go. Hello. Okay, cool. Hi. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Sure. I guess what I'm thinking now about my plan and what I've learned is that, yeah, I have a bit more slope where the house is going than where where, where I am right now in my uh, studio. Um, but I think I would still like to do the, maybe like a, a tank in the ground and a sump pump. Uh, mm -hmm. So the sump pump should not, should be hooked up to the electricity and be on all the time. And as soon as water hits that, that uh, bucket or that tank on below ground, it's it just immediately sends it out through a hose. Now I can I can split that hose, or I can I can do all kinds of things once it's once that pressure comes through the hose. You know. Um, and, and you and you want those plants to get that that much consistent water? You'll you'll have to think about what that what those plants might need. Yeah, I, right now I'm 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 watering two trees uh, uh a palm tree and a uh a, a persimmon not a persimmon a, a, a pomegranate and they're both doing really well they love it so i can i was really worried about that because i know about some of these detergents you know that the salts build up over time uh so i guess that's something i don't know if you run into that at all with anybody yeah no, even no. with the even, even with the good stuff, I noticed there's salts in it. Yeah, I have not run into that yet. No. In my okay. But you can flush it with um, rainwater, of course, to to some to flush out those salts. Yeah, when it rains, right? <laughs> it's yeah, it's been, it's really it's really hard to promote uh, rainwater harvesting this year. <laughs> well, okay, so those people who are rainwater harvesting. Thank God for uh, for Maddox and Sons. <laughs> they have they deliver water they're from they're yeah. in douglas and they'll deliver you, you water. always need a backup right in yes the, you must have a plan b always always well thanks steve yeah that sounds sure. that sounds great um like how you're thinking um does uh i see there's is there anything in the chat thank you nope. steve Nothing in the chat, just a lot of thank yous. I did put a couple of links, one directly to the ADEQ gray water brochure that you were referencing. There's also a link to our YouTube channel and our WaterWise uh, website. Uh, just a reminder, I will send out an email uh, this afternoon with a link for a post survey. If you just take a couple of minutes, it's only about 10 questions long. That would greatly help us as well. I will well, thank you everybody. I hope that uh, this inspired you to perhaps install some gray water in your own home or, or um, help a friend. And uh, if you have any questions, please let us know. And uh, appreciate everybody coming so much. So have a great day and uh, let it rain. <laughs>